now to talk about magical girls. Yes, magical girls. <laughs> yes. Girls that are magical and transform. Or in Sakura's case, <laughs> have a friend who has a wardrobe. Wear this, please. You have a strange fetish, mm -hmm. you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our random thoughts about some of our favorite magical girls. Starting with Cardcaptor Sakura. I can't remember, have you seen any of the series yet? Or is it just going to be all me gushing about how wonderful the series is? <laughs> you know me and my unopened DVD cases. I've only seen the four kids at it. <laughs> well, at least that's good enough. Because the personality is pretty much the same. They just chopped it so they thought, Oh, the male audience won't like this show without a male protagonist. <laughs> Let's cut off the first seven episodes and introduce him without any lead up. <laughs> At all, because, you know, what's happening in the story isn't important, we just need a male protagonist. I actually went and watched the 4Kids edit on YouTube uh, recently and went, not only did they cut out the first seven episodes, they also butchered episode eight to add in a summary that wasn't there in the first place. <laughs> mm-hmm. But we're not here to talk about 4Kids' numerous shortcomings. <laughs> we're here to talk about how Clamp, I'm never quite sure if I'm pronouncing the name of that group correctly, and how they portray magical girls, and how this one was a nice, refreshing take on it, because she may be magical, but she doesn't do the whole transformation thing. No, she has a friend who, if you think about it, is kind of creepy, because she's like, I want to dress my friend up like a doll! Well, isn't that what most fashion designers are like? <laughs> I don't know any fashion designers, so I have no idea. You know, they design ridiculous clothing and get other people to wear it? <laughs> because you very rarely see a designer displaying their own fashion line. Hmm, that's a good point. But Sakura's, you know, the classic sweet girl, innocent, but can be strong and take care of herself eventually. And she's pretty well matched by the male protagonist, Lee Shalron, especially since they do the classic, we hate each other at first. Well, it's more like he dislikes her because he's supposed to be the actual magical heir because he's actually related by blood to the guy who originally created the cloud cards so yeah but considering that you'd think his family would have worked a little harder to i don't know find the book <laughs> yeah it reminds me of how bad of a guardian kerbos actually is wait wait you fell asleep <laughs> like i understand it can be kind of boring being stuck in a book for ugh, years yeah you can only reread a book so many times in a row <laughs> yeah, you should know. I'll just reread this book again, especially since it doesn't take much brain power to read it. Read. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it goes really fast because your brain is providing you with the sentences without you necessarily having read them. <laughs> yeah, so let's move on to our next magical girl. I wasn't quite done with Sakura because we were saying how she was the non traditional because she didn't have a transformation, but she did still have an animal sidekick. Oh, yeah. She does have an animal sidekick, except, hmm, no, you're right. <laughs> that is pretty traditional right there, but the non-transformation is untraditional. Yes, and she has a non-magical friend who knows the truth about her, who manages to help her out, and not just with the costumes. Though videotaping everything is kind of dangerous, especially if you're supposed to have a secret identity, so... Just a little bit, but remember this was created back in the days before YouTube was so ridiculously insane? <laughs> And the fact that everyone and their dog will pretty much film everything or anything nowadays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that reminds me of this great little image someone made of, what if the Titanic happened nowadays? It showed everyone floating in the water holding up their cameras as the Titanic was sinking. <laughs> of course, the first thing that popped to my question was, wow, those all must be really good phones to survive being sunk in water. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I was thinking more as everyone going, no, my phone's dead. <laughs> Okay, this has nothing to do with card capture or magical girls, so... <laughs> you know how we do tangents. That's part of the fun. Mm -hmm. Any more thoughts on Sakura? Nope, let's tangent our way over to our next magical girl. Which I believe is Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, we've talked a lot about her recently, haven't we? Well, of course, you know, with Sailor Moon Crystal out. But, you know, she is a very classic, iconic, magical girl. She's got the whole thing. Young... Schoolgirl, magical transformation, magical animal companion. Mm -hmm. Has a group of magical friends. Has the f 
She doesn't have the friend that's non-magical that knows about her powers, though. Yes, she does. Furu-chan knows in the manga. Hmm. I guess they didn't have that in the TV, uh, the new TV series. Hmm. They did not. They had people who had inklings and were concerned about the scouts, but it was never blatantly stated that any of them knew the truth. But in the manga, Furu-chan, Andrew in the English first anime iteration, i.e. the cute blonde who works at the video game store, knows that they're Sailor Scouts, and knows that the command center is underneath his video game store. <laughs> but yeah, she's like one of the classics because, especially since she was first introduced in America, and I think that was one of the first shows where everyone started getting an inkling of what this anime thing was, at least the mass public. Yeah, because uh, Dragon Ball Z just didn't have quite the same level of penetration, even though it's everywhere. And there were tons of people who were still trying to go to DBZ Resurrection next last weekend. Guys, why didn't you pre-order your tickets? This theater is sold out. It's kind of funny seeing all these guys in Goku shirt walking away looking all dejected. <laughs> oh, that must have been funny. <laughs> it was. I was trying very hard not to laugh because I felt badly for them. But I'm like, seriously, with a limited engagement like this, you fandango your tickets. <laughs> Uh, but back to Sailor Moon. Yeah, she was probably one of the first magical girls the U.S. was really introduced to, to the mass public. Because Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z are like the two animes that most people jump to. Was like, yeah, that was the first one I saw. <laughs> Though I do like in the most modern version I've seen, since I never really read the manga until recently, she's much better handled than in the first iteration that was brought over here. Because I feel she grew more in... Crystal than she did in the parts of the original Sailor Moon anime that I watched. <laughs> well, the original Sailor Moon anime was full of filler. You can't have a lot of growth when you're stretching out your story arcs. So you think it's time to move on to the next Magical Girl? No slight to the other Sailor Scouts, but if we are dealing with Magical Girls that are part of a team, we are picking only one from the team. Mm-hmm. Well, we could probably, at least me, I could go on quite a bit about Mercury. Um, cough. <laughs> Uh, and I could about Jupiter, but moving on. Which to one I haven't seen yet myself. Or I watched one episode of it with you. <laughs> I think I forced you to sit through two episodes, but... <laughs> I don't think forced, because I remember enjoying it, but I don't remember much about it, so... <laughs> Alright, so next is Pune-chan from Magical Witch Pune-chan, which is basically a dark parody of Magical Girl stories. This young lady has a transformation sequence, a wand, i.e. magical item, and an animal companion. But she is vicious, completely into violence, and defeating anyone that she feels and needs to be defeated with the power of her submission holds. And her magical animal is trying to kill her. <laughs> uh, definitely sounds like I need to watch more of this. I'll guess next time I get a chance to re sit down and watch anime, be that one. <laughs> <laughs> Other than anime I'm trying to watch for another podcast we'll be doing. Yes, but it's it's very fun because Pune-chan is sent down to Earth and her father isn't happy about this. So her father actually tries to get people to scare her and make her give up and come home. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. You know what's really funny? We only had a couple at first, but I've been thinking of other magical girls I want to talk about now. <laughs> well, that's okay. Keep going. For instance, Witch. That's a nice little magical girl thing there. The first time I was introduced to it was thanks to the Disney Channel version of Witch. By the way, it's, it's an acronym. It stands for the names of all the females who are in the group, and specifically Will. Now, Will is a standard, kind of a standard magical girl, but there's a bit of a twist to it. She doesn't have an animal companion. Actually, I don't think any of them have a magical, have a magical animal companion, unless you want to count the boy, but... <laughs> <laughs> Technically, I think you could count... haven't seen it in a while the little green goblin guy in this series as a quote-unquote magical pet since he's kind of just the comical sidekick voiced by Stephen Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> that was another one of the times of like, he voiced him? <laughs> and then we have, God, give me a second here, I just blanked, I had it just a second ago. We have Witch. It was another American show that was magical girl oriented. But now I can't remember it. There were a lot. Winx Club, which was terrible. Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders. Oh, which had potential. It's a new one that just came out. It's Star versus the Forces of Evil. She's a magical girl, though 
Actually, I think you would classify her more in the magical princess genre, since she's a princess who comes from another dimension to study Earth or something? Basically, she's getting punished for the fact that she kind of abused the fact that she now has these powers, since she is a princess and she's finally of age and she gets this magical scepter that allows her to do things and immediately gets punished to the human world to learn how to properly use her powers without breaking the rules. And in the process, evil king who actually wants those powers is now after her and keeps sending creatures after her. And she has a male sidekick who knows about her powers but actually isn't useless. Yes, well let's not forget that most of the girls we've discussed so far are actually princesses. Oh yeah! Sakura and Will being the exceptions. Usagi is a princess, Pune-chan is a princess, this one you just mentioned is a princess. Mm -hmm. And notice they're not all from Japan, because that genre is kind of leaked over into America. <laughs> Probably because of Sailor Moon and every teenage boy and girl growing up watching it. <laughs> mm, yes, but the next American one I'm bringing up predates Sailor Moon, at least Sailor Moon in the US. Princess Adora. Oh, yes. A.K.A. She-Ra, Princess of Power. I don't remember watching that series much, but I probably watched it a lot, but I don't remember it much as He-Man, probably because He-Man has been brought up more recently than She-Ra. You know, because He-Man got a remake and She-Ra hasn't yet, so. Yeah, well, you know, She-Ra was just the spin-off of, hmm, this business model's working really well, let's see if we can come up with a girl version and tie them together. <laughs> yes! Adam, all this time you've had a sister, and you never knew about it. And the entire time since she was kidnapped, we didn't do anything about it, but now you can go do something about it, because we need another TV series. <laughs> Toy line initiate! <laughs> we need something for the female demographic. Yes. That reminds me, would you consider Korra a magical girl? She could be considered a magical girl, because she has more powers than the average person because she controls more than one element. And you can consider the avatar state her magical transformation. Mm -hmm. And she has more than one animal. And so technically the animals she has can't bend, but, but they are informative. Hmm. And they are helpful in their own way. Well, yeah. I guess you could consider her a magical girl. Just kind of popped in my head. It's kind of funny when we were coming up with this, we got like stuck at like four magical girls. But now that we're talking about it. Yes. Well, Shira is like really one of the ones where they just kept throwing powers at her. Because she can communicate with animals, she's incredibly strong, she can heal most wounds, and oh, let's see, her sword can transform into almost anything, <laughs> and her horse transforms into an alicorn. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of what happened to the poor Sword of Omens by the end of the original Thundercats run. <laughs> Yeah, the thing could do everything. <laughs> Lina, what are you doing? I'm opening up a bottle. What does it look like? <laughs> With the Sword of Omens? It can do anything. <laughs> Pretty much. But the advantages that Shira had as the spinoff as opposed to her male counterpart is that she didn't have to act like an idiot in her disguised form. Adora of the Rebels and Shira were both competent, intelligent women where He-Man was smart, Prince Adam was a moron. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of other characters in American cartoons recently where you could consider them as magical girls, when they're not obviously magical girls. I can't really think of anything right now, but I bet you'll think of more once we stop this recording. <laughs> of course, that's usually how it works. So, can you think of any more? Or any more points on the ones we have brought up? I think we made enough points on the ones we have. I'm trying to think of something else. Because the two shows I mentioned weren't really worth talking about. They were just more examples of mm -hmm. American Magical Girls. Oh, I forgot about some other points I started to bring up on Witch, but I forgot to. It's more of the back history that I found out about it as after the TV ran over, I was like, I need more of this! So I found out it actually came from a French kind of manga slash comic book that Disney bought the rights to. So the French seem to come up with a lot of stuff, like Code Lyoko, which mm -hmm. reminds me, you could consider, god, I suddenly can't remember her name even though I did drawing on her recently, <laughs> but you could consider every female that, that ends up going to Lyoko a magical girl, because there's a transformation sequence, we got the standard guy, we don't have, well technically we do have an animal, the dog. Yeah, but it doesn't belong to the girl, not Yumi who goes into Lyoko or Alita. Oh yeah, you could technically consider Yumi 
and Aelita, both magical girls. Especially Aelita because she's technically kind of a princess or daughter of the guy who created Lyoko. Yes, but if you're going to take it that far, then you're going to have to consider Synergy from Jim and the Holograms a magical girl. Um, yeah, Jim and Synergy and, yeah, that whole thing could technically be considered magical girls as well. Hmm, wow, we can really take this genre and it matches a lot of things, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, even when we're using stuff that doesn't involve magic, like Code Lyoko and Jim and the Holograms, there is no magic. Though speaking of Jim and the Holograms, oh my god, that live-action movie. Someone no, kill it now! No, 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 no. Kill it! Kill it with fire! <laughs> At least the comic book's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So any final thoughts on all of our magical girl wandering and the fact that, wow, we can match it up with pretty much any group of girls who has any kind of powers, whether magical or otherwise? That probably as a counterpoint to this, we should do one of uh, giant mech shows with predominantly <laughs> male pilots. <laughs> Chicks dig giant robots. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Magical Girls and the Magical Girl genre. Thanks for listening. If you like my art and want to see more of it, I am on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want to keep up to date with the podcast, you can find us on Tumblr as well. If you really like our channel, please feel free to leave a comment and or subscribe. If you really like my art and want some of your own, I am currently open for commissions. All links in the description. When did you add Care Bear X Five Nights at Freddy's to the list? Wait, what? <laughs> Enter the crossover list. I just noticed that. Velvet, stop hitting me. When did I add what to the crossover list? <laughs> Care Bear of Five Nights at Freddy's. I didn't add that. <laughs> well, I don't remember doing it. <laughs> well, check the change log. <laughs> <laughs>